Hello students. Today we are going to learn about Animate CC, the most popular software for animation. First, let's start. What is Animate? Animate is a powerful animation software package developed by Adobe Systems, formerly Macromedia. Animate provides a versatile and easy way to create animation that consists of images, sounds and videos with various effects. Animate is a vector-based program which means that the graphics created in it can be scaled to any size without compromising the quality. Animate is extremely useful for developing highly interactive websites, online advertisements, computer games and contents for various mobile devices. Playing movies in any browser is one of the best features of Animate. Students know the fact that Animate was earlier known as Future Splash Animator, developed by Future Wave in December 1996. Later on, it was acquired by Adobe Systems in 2005. The first version of Animate CC was released on February 8, 2016. Now, let us know how to open Animate. Click on the Start. Scroll down to Adobe Animate CC. The opening screen appears. Click on the Action Script 3.0 under Create New section to open the Animate document. Students know the fact that the default extension of Animate file is .fla. Students, let's talk about the workspace. Animate is similar to the Paint software in Windows. It has almost the same tools that Paint uses, except that these tools are mainly used for animation. The workspace is the arrangement of various Animate elements such as the Tools panel, Library panel, Property Inspector and Stage. Students, let's have a discussion. Animate versus Paint Stage The stage is a drawing board where we can create graphics animation and can make modifications too. It is a large white space that is present at the center of the workspace. By default, the stage dimensions are 550 into 400 pixels. The gray area surrounding the stage is called the work area. This area can contain graphic elements which can be moved to the stage as and when required. We can modify the view of the stage size by selecting the view, then go to zoom in and view, then go to zoom out options as well. Menu. The menu provides control over common functions like opening, closing and saving of a document. Some other features like copying, pasting, calling up specific panels and controlling overall animate environment can be seen under menu options. Tools panel. The tools panel consists of various tools to draw, paint, select and modify objects in the workspace. The tools panel is divided into four parts. Tools. View, Colors and Options The Tools section. It contains tools that are used for drawing, painting and selecting objects. The View section. It consists of tools for zooming and panning the application window. The Colors section. It includes modifiers to select colors for the shape you draw using Stroke and Fill Color Picker. The Options section. It displays modifiers for the currently selected tools. Modifiers affect the tool's painting or editing operations. Timeline The timeline is a rectangular window that is present at the bottom of the stage. It is the area where one controls the sequencing and timing of graphics and other elements of a movie. The major component of the timeline are layers, frames and the playhead. Frames Animations in Animate are created with the help of frames. Frame is defined as the little rectangular cells that appear on the timeline. Every fifth frame displays a number which you can find on top of the timeline. Like films, Animate document divides the length of the time into frames. A frame displays the content of the movie at a specific moment of time. Let us take a quick view. The shortcut key to insert a frame is F5. Keyframes Keyframes are special types of frames where we define some change to an object's properties for an animation, like position, color, shape, etc. A keyframe is represented by a solid black dot. 
We can easily change the length of a twinned animation by dragging a keyframe in the timeline. Students, let us know more. Keyframes can be of two types. If a keyframe has content in it, then it is represented by a dark circle. An empty circle in the timeline preceded by a keyframe represents an empty or blank keyframe. Let us take a quick view. The shortcut key to insert a keyframe is F6. Layers Layers are like transparent sheets stacked on top of one another, each containing a different image that appears on the stage. When we open a new anime document, it displays only one layer, which contains its own timeline with endless frames. We can add more layers to organize the artwork and animation in a document. We can draw and edit objects on one layer without affecting objects on another layer. The active layer is indicated with a keyframe navigation controller icon. Playhead The playhead indicates the current frame displayed on the stage. It is represented by a red frame and red vertical line below it in the timeline window. It moves from left to right in the timeline as the movie proceeds through the frames. The speed of the playhead's movement is based on the frame rate setting. Property Inspector the Property Inspector is a panel that displays the properties of the selected object, text, symbol, an image, a line or a shape. The list of properties also varies in the Property Inspector depending on the object selected. You can make changes to the object or document attributes in the Property Inspector. Students let us understand how to set document properties. Each time when we open Animate, the application opens a new file with the default settings for the movie properties. We can create a new movie as we want. To set the frame rate, background, color and ruler units, we use the following steps. Click on the file then go to New. The new document dialog box is displayed. Select the Action Script 3.0 option in the Type section. Define the stage dimensions, ruler units, background color and frame rate and click OK. A document will open with the defined settings. Changing the settings of an already open document. You can also modify the settings of already open document later on by selecting the modify, then go to document option and change the settings as per your need. To specify the stage size in pixels, select the pixels from the units drop-down list. Enter the values of width and height in their corresponding boxes in the stage size section. To set the stage size according to the contents on the stage, select the match contents option next to the stage size section. To set the background color of the stage, choose any color from the stage color swatch. To change the frame rate, specify the speed at which an animation is to be played in frames per second in the frames rate box. By default, the frame rate is 24 fps frame per second. Type any number between 0.01 to 120 fps in the frame rate box. To save the current settings as the default, click on the Make Default button. Click on OK after specifying the required options. Students, let me share an interesting point with you. Ctrl plus J is the shortcut key to display document properties dialog box. Ok students, now let us understand about drawing an object and grouping outline with fill. When we make a drawing in Animate, it actually creates two objects, the fill and the outline. To manipulate elements as a single object, we need to group them. Select the pencil tool and select brown as a stroke color. Draw the trunk as shown in the figure. Choose the selection tool and move the pointer on the tree trunk. A curve is displayed below the arrow. Hold down the left mouse button and drag the lines of the trunk to give a proper shape. Select the pencil tool and choose the smooth mode from the pencil mode option. Select green as the stroke color. Draw the curves of the tree top as shown in the figure.
Select green color as the fill color and then select the paint bucket tool. Click inside the tree top. Similarly, fill brown color in the trunk. Select the selection tool. Double click on the tree trunk and group them by pressing Ctrl plus G. Drag the tree trunk over the tree top. Now select the complete tree by dragging the mouse around it. Choose the modify then go to group option or press Ctrl plus G. Students note, you can also select multiple objects by choosing the selection tool, holding down the shift key and clicking on the objects. Let us take a quick view. The shortcut key for the pencil tool is shift plus Y and for the selection tool is V. Alright, let us understand how to apply gradient fill. A gradient is a multicolor fill in which one color gradually changes into another color. Gradients are formed by mixing of two or more colors in an object. You can either use the inbuilt gradient presets from the swatches panel or use the color panel to create your own gradients and add them to the swatches panel. Follow these steps to apply a gradient fill to an object. Select the tree using the selection tool. Ungroup the selection by pressing Ctrl plus Shift plus G key combination or by double clicking on the tree. Select the paint bucket tool. Click the fill color swatch to get the color palette. Select the green gradient color effect from the swatches panel and click inside the top of the tree. The gradient color fills the shape. Students, let's know more. You can add another color marker and assign colors to them by clicking below the gradient bar. To remove a color marker, drag it off the bar. Ok students, now let us find out how to create a new gradient. Animate can create two types of gradients. Linear gradient changes color from the starting point to the end point in a straight line. Radial gradient Changes color in a circular outward direction starting from the focal point. To create a new gradient, follow these steps. Choose the window then go to color option to display the color panel. Choose either linear gradient or radial gradient from the color type drop down list. Here we have selected the linear gradient. Double click on the left pointer below the gradient definition bar. The color palette appears. Select the brown color. Double click on the right pointer and select the orange color. Select the paint bucket tool and click on the trunk of the tree. Adjust the color blends of the gradient by moving the pointers closer to each other or farther apart. Select any mode among, extend, reflect or repeat under the flow section to apply to the gradient. To add more colors to your gradient, click anywhere on the gradient definition bar to add a slider pointer. You can then double click this slider to set the color. Students know that you can add the new gradient color in the swatches panel by clicking on the add to swatches button below the gradient definition bar. Or click on the hamburger button on the top right corner of the color panel bar and select the add swatch option from the drop down menu. Students let us take a quick view. The shortcut key to open the color panel to set the gradient color is alt plus shift plus F9. Ok now let us find out how to modify a linear gradient. As you have filled the linear gradient shade in the trunk similarly fill the linear gradient color in the top of the tree. Let us now modify the linear gradient filled in the tree shape by using the gradient transform tool. Click on the small triangle on the bottom right corner of the free transform tool and select the gradient transform tool from the tools panel. Click on the object fill with gradient color in it. The gradient selection shape will appear as shown in figure. Width adjustment handle. This is the center point of the gradient. Rotation handle. Changing the center of the gradient. The center point of the gradient is the place where all the mixing colors are present in equal proportion. 
To chain the center of a gradient, use the following steps. Bring the pointer over the center point. Drag the center point in the desired direction to change its position and observe the change. Changing the width of the gradient. To change the width of the gradient filled inside the shape, follow the steps given below. Position the pointer over the width adjustment handle. It will change to a double headed arrow. Drag the adjustment handle either to the left or right to increase or decrease the gradient's width. Rotating the gradient fill. To rotate the gradient color filled inside the shape, follow these steps. Position the pointer over the rotation handle. The pointer shape changes to Drag the rotation handle clockwise or anti-clockwise according to the need and observe the change. Students let us understand how to modify a radial gradient. Likewise, you can modify a radial gradient color filled inside the tree. Let us modify the gradient filled in the shape by using the gradient transform tool. Select the gradient transform tool in the tools panel and click on the object. The bounding shape will appear as shown in the figure. Adjust the gradient as required. Center of the gradient. You can drag the center point to change the starting point of color mixing of the gradient. Rotation handle. You can drag the rotation handle clockwise or anti-clockwise to rotate the gradient as required. Width adjustment handle. You can drag the width adjustment handle to increase or decrease the gradient's width. Radius adjustment handle. You can drag the radius adjustment handle to alter the gradient size proportionately. Ok, let us learn about editing objects. Selecting objects. To edit an object, first select it, otherwise the command will not be applied. Click on the selection tool. Click and drag the selection box around the object and release the mouse button. Or double click on the object to select both stroke and fill. Transforming the shape. Using the free transform tool, we can scale, rotate, compress, stretch or skew lines and shapes. To compress the drawing, follow these steps. Draw a hexagon using the polystar tool. Select the free transform tool in the tools panel. Double click on the hexagon on the stage to select both stroke and fill. A bounding box appears around the object. Drag the handle on the top center of the box down to shrink the hexagon. To scale an object, follow these steps. Select the free transform tool from the tools panel and double click on the object. To scale the object in both the horizontal or vertical direction, drag one of its corner handles. To scale the object horizontally, drag the horizontal center handle. Likewise, to scale the object vertically, drag the vertical center handle. Click outside the object to end the transformation. Students, let me quickly tell you that the shortcut key to use free transform tool is Q. Rotating an object. Follow the given steps to rotate or skew the object. Select the object. Select the modify, then go to transform and then go to rotate and skew. Or hover the mouse on one of the corner handles of the object. The pointer changes to rotation handle. Drag the corner handle to rotate the object. An outline of the object appears as you rotate. Release the mouse button and observe the rotated object. To end the transformation, click outside the selected object. Skewing an object. Skewing an object means slanting the object by a specific angle along one or both the axes. You can skew an object by dragging or by entering a value in the transformed panel. Select the object using free transform tool. Choose the windows then go to transform option. Click the skew radio button and enter values for skew horizontal and skew vertical angles. Or hover the mouse on the center handle. The pointer changes to skew handle. Drag the center handle to skew the object. Release the mouse button. 
To end transformation, click outside the selected object. Flipping an object Draw a fish using the drawing tools and fill color in it using the paint bucket tool. Select the fish using the selection tool. Select the modifier then go to transform option. Then choose either flip vertical or flip horizontal and observe the change in the object. Copy an object. Select the object that you want to copy by using the selection tool. Select the edit then go to copy option. Click on the blank area on the stage. Select the Paste in Center option from the Edit menu. You will get a duplicate copy of the object at the center of the stage. Moving an object Select the object that you want to move by using the Selection tool. Place the pointer inside the object. A four-headed arrow sign appears next to the arrow. Click and drag the object to a new position. Release the mouse and you will see that the object has moved to a new location. Now let us talk about importing graphics. Select the file then go to import and then go to import to stage. The import dialog box appears. Browse and select the file that you want to import and click on open. The picture will be placed on the stage. Students note. To import a file into the library, select File, then go to Import and then go to Import to Library. Drag the library item on the stage to use it in your anime document. The shortcut key to import a picture to animate is Ctrl plus R. Students, let's talk about the animation in Animate. Animation involves a series of still images, usually painted or sketched, displayed in rapid sequence. This transition from one image to another is so quick that it appears to show movement. Animation in Animate is created by changing the contents of successive frames. We can make an object move across the stage, increase or decrease its size, fade in or fade out, change color or shape using an animation. There are two methods for creating an animation in Animate. Frame by Frame Animation In Frame by Frame Animation, we create an image in every frame. Twint Animation In the Twint Animation, we create the starting and ending keyframes to animate the object. Animate itself creates emotion effects in between the frames. Students, let me tell you more. It is not always required to draw an object on the stage and then create an animation in Animate. You can also create animations from the external images and bitmaps. Students, we will discuss about Tint Twinning. Tint Twinning is used to change the color of an object. Tint effects work only on symbols and cannot be added to the objects that are drawn directly on the canvas of the movie. Select the text tool in the tools panel. Select text then go to font then go to home word bound to set the font type. Choose text then go to size and then go to 48 from the menu to set the big font size. Select text style fox bold to make the text bold or you can make changes in the formatting of text in properties panel as shown in figure. Now type the text skips. In the work area, click on the selection tool and select the text. Now click on the modify then go to convert to symbol. Type the name text for the symbol in the name text box in the convert to symbol dialog box. Select the graphic option from the type drop down list and click OK. Graphic symbol automatically gets saved in the library. Select the frame 13 in the timeline and press F5 to insert a frame. 
Insert a keyframe in frame 10, frame 20 and frame 30. To add tint effect, select frame 1 and click on the type text. In the Properties Inspector, select Tint from the drop-down list of the Style option under the Color Effects section. Move the Tint slider towards right to make it 100%. Set the colors to Red equals to 255, Green equals to 0, Blue equals to 0, RGB colors. Similarly, add Tint Twinning to frame 10 and set the colors R equals to 0, G equals to 255 and B equals to 0. Add Tint Twinning to frame 20 and set the colors R equals to 0, G equals to 0, B equals to 255. Add Tint Twinning to frame 30 and set the colors R equals to 255, G equals to 0, B equals to 0. Right click on the timeline at any place between frame 1 and frame 10 and select the Create Classic Twin option from the drop down menu. Similarly, right-click on the timeline at any place between frame 10 and frame 20 and between frame 20 and frame 30 and choose the Create Classic Twin from the drop-down menu. Click on the control, then go to Test Movie, then go to In Animate and view the tint twinning effect on the text. Ok students, let me explain you how to create a simple text shape twin. With text shape twinning, you can convert one shape of text into another shape in order to create an animation. In shape twinning, you cannot convert an object into a symbol. Let us try. Select the text tool and choose text, then size, then 48 from the main menu and select text, then style, then bold to make the text thick. You can also select the font, size and style from the Properties panel under the Character section. Click on the color in the Properties panel. The color palette will be displayed. Select any color of your choice. Type the text on the stage in the first frame of the timeline. Select Window then go to Align. In the Align panel, select the Align to Stay checkbox. Click on the Align Horizontal Center button and Align Vertical Center button under the Align section. Close the Align panel by clicking on the Hamburger button and choose the Close Group option. Move the pointer at frame 50 and right-click the mouse. Select the Insert Keyframe option from the pop-up menu. Select Frame 1 and choose Break Apart option from the Modify menu. The letters break into separate blocks. Again, select Break Apart option. Note the text gets converted into shape. Now right-click on the frame 25 and select Insert Blank Keyframe option. Type some new text and then align Horizontal Center and Vertical Center. Select the text in frame 25, then select Modify and then go to Break Apart Twice. Similarly, select the text in frame 50 and then choose Modify, then go to Break Apart Twice. Right click between the frame 1 and frame 25 and select Create Shape Twin option from the context menu. Then right click between the frame 25 and frame 50 and again select the Create Shape Twin option. Select the control, then go to Play option from the main menu to play the animation. Students also note that the shortcut key to convert an object to symbol is F8. Students, let us know how to apply filters to text. Filters allow you to add interesting visual effects to text, buttons and movie clips. Filters usually involve effects such as drop shadows, blurs, glows and bevels, etc. These effects can be easily applied using the Properties panel. Follow the given steps to apply a filter to your text. Open a new Animate document. Select the Text tool from the Tools panel and type the text Wisdom. Choose Selection tool and then select Modify, Break Apart. Now, convert each letter of your text into a symbol by pressing F8 
and select the movie clip type from the Convert to Symbol dialog box. Select all the letters using the Selection tool. Click on the Add Filter button under the Filter section of the Properties panel. Select Drop Shadow from the Context menu and observe the change. The settings for the applied filter will appear in the Filter section of the Properties panel. Students, let's take a quick view. To make the Properties panel visible on the screen, press Ctrl plus F3 key combination. Alright students, let us know how to animate filtered text. Animate provides a unique feature to animate movie clips that have filters using the classic tweens. You can create an animation that contains light source effects, highlights, bevels and distortions by changing the filter properties at different keyframes and applying classic tween. Let us create a disappearing text effect on the text with drop shadow effect created above. Select the text wisdom, right click on it and select the distribute to layers option from the context menu. This will split all the letters into separate layers. Select the layer of the first letter and insert keyframe at the frame 10. Select the layer of the second letter and insert keyframe at frame 20. Repeat this step for all letters of your text. On the timeline, right click between the two keyframes of a layer and select the Create Classic Tween option. Repeat the same steps for all the layers. Select the keyframe 10 for the first letter and click the letter. Select Alpha option from the Style drop-down list under Color Effect section. Now move the Alpha slider towards left to make it 0%. Repeat this step for all the letters. Press Ctrl plus Enter to preview the animation. Ok students, let us take a recap of this chapter. Animate is a powerful animation software package developed by Adobe Systems. The stage is a drawing board where we can create graphics, animation and make modifications in it. The default state size is 550 into 400 pixels. The major components of the timeline are layers, frames and the playhead. Frames are the little rectangular cells that appear on the timeline. They display the content of the movie at a specific moment of time. Keyframes are special types of frames where we define some changes to an object's properties for an animation like position, color, shape etc. Playhead is represented by a red frame and red vertical line below it in the timeline. It indicates the current frame displayed on the stage. It moves from left to right as the movie is played. The library panel in Animate acts as a storehouse where symbols created in Animate are stored in an organized manner. Animation involves a series of still images, usually painted or sketched, displayed in rapid sequence. Tint twinning is used to change the color of an object. Filters allow you to add interesting visual effects to text, buttons and movie clips.